Today I'm going to show you how to navigate your iRacing replays in a much more efficient way. Hello everybody, Chaz Draycott here at Chaz Draycott Media. What we're going to go over today is a number of keybinds that you can use in the iRacing sim when you're navigating either a replay or even just the session you're in at the time. Helps you switch between cars, cameras, replays, speeds, things like that. Even camera angles as well. You know, it helps editing your cameras, setting them up, makes them a lot quicker. Um, so we're going to go over that and hopefully it does clear up a lot of things for you and makes the whole thing a lot more slick. The first thing worth mentioning here is that this works whether you're in a replay or a live session at the time. So for the example that I'm going to do here today, we're going to go to a recent race that I covered at Watkins Glen in the World GT Championship on Race Spot TV. We're just going to launch that replay and get in the sim and then I'll show you exactly how this all works. So we've got the sim playing right now, as you can see in here. We're just watching Nickel Foggy, or we were, if the replay hadn't cut him away, because it wasn't <laughs> rendering all 60 cars. Oh, brilliant. Anyway, you've just seen me do something here then. So, shift and V, and V switches between cars. Literally just back and forth. If you press Control and V, it goes to yourself, as you can see at the bottom there. It goes to Chaz Draycott. Now, if you want to do the same with cameras, you press C. And then Shift and C to go back one. So that's next camera on C. Shift and C goes to previous camera. Now, we're going to come back to that in a minute, because there's another thing to switch between cameras. It gets a little bit more complicated. So, some of the basics away from that are play and pause. Number pad is one of the main things you can use here. Five in the middle is pause and play. Simple as it gets, really. Start and stop. While it's paused, you can skip between frames using six and four, which are nice and easy to use. And if you use shift and six and four, then you can fast forward it or rewind it. And obviously, the more you do it, the different speeds it goes at. Okay. Now, if you want to, say, skip to the previous lap, you know, you didn't want to sit there waiting for it to rewind like this the whole time, you can press Shift and 1 and 3. It's basically the next time the car that you're looking at crosses the line. So if we do Shift and 3, it goes to the next time Dave Baker crosses the line. If we do it as Shift and 1, it's the previous lap. But in this case, this is a, a very different case right now, he wasn't in my replay because of how many cars it rendered, unfortunately. But we can do that. The next lap as well. It doesn't do far enough because I've not got enough on this replay. I've picked a great example here, haven't I? You have your play, pause, fast forward, rewind, etc. And even, you can have slow-mo as well. If you do... Now Charles is trying to remember this on the fly here. Eight. That's it. Could you see I remembered that? Press eight. The more you play it, the more it slows it down and so on but honestly doing this you know it it becomes second nature having shift and not having it this is how i edit all of my screenshots and replays and so on now that's where things come in handy next is editing we all know the whole control f12 thing which brings up this wonderful menu in the bottom corner now you do have to use your mouse for this you know if you're choosing key times 10 and using your zoom and so on. You can use zoom by doing the square brackets left and right. That does help zoom in and out. But obviously using your mouse on this does it manually. You can do it a little bit quicker, I suppose. Now, if you wanted to switch between cameras within a specific group, let's go scenic, for example. You can see there's a few cameras here in this group. You just press B and it switches between them. And again, shift and B goes back. So a lot of the time, when I'm taking screenshots, I will use a scenic camera, for example. Now, coming back to the one and three scenario, when we're going on to next laps, etc. As you can see, just going through C changes all these cameras. We'll get back to TV one. It's a very interesting one, this. We'll actually go to the very start of the replay. Oh, again, I'm... I'm <laughs> I'm stumbling upon things here that I'm just telling myself. Um, while you're in Control F12, by the way, if you are in a camera such as TV, it will not change shots. You can see it here, it's just looking at nothing. As soon as you take that away, it goes back to the shot that it should be at. Always remember that. If you are stuck in this edit mode here, watch, it won't change now through the final corner. 
it will stay on this camera angle until we come out of that. That's important to remember. If you're driving along though, let's just say we go to Far Chase, and you want to see the next incident, usually it's just an incident point, somebody going off, a crash, Control and 1 and 3 will take you to that incident. It'll take you a few seconds before in fact. So this was Jake Blackhall unfortunately having a bit of contact and going wide. But then if you want to go to the next incident, you'd go to this, which shows you your own Kaiser, unfortunately getting a bit of net code with Jake, and off he goes. And you can use that, a, peop a lot of people use that for what they call their carnage reports. I know Matt or uh, Empty Box made that quite famous really on YouTube within iRacing. So I imagine they use something similar to that. But that's an interesting one that not many people know about actually. Now then, when it comes to actually moving the cameras around, we are going to go back to Chaz's good old scenic camera, like I use for my screenshots. We're going to go Control F12. Now, if you want to move the camera around, you can use WASD. It's as simple as that. But I know what you're thinking. Chaz, the camera stays flat and stays at the same height. Well, if you want to change the height or the altitude, you hit Alt and then W and S, which takes it up and down. And if you want to roll it, A and D, left and right. You can obviously see these numbers changing in this tab here. Whenever you do that, you get these changes, and obviously you get these changes as well to the Z value. Just saves clicking it and so on. You know, you can just use your hands. It's very, very quick. So on top of that, we then have Control WASD, which basically is where the camera is pointing. Now be careful when you're playing with this, because if you're doing it on a camera that is pointed at the car, then it will basically change that value from there on out. So if we go on, say, the chase cam, wow this isn't quite behaving itself because your own car is sideways so if we go to a car that's going in a conventional direction using WASD you know we can move in and out of Lee Berridge's car but if you start doing that to say static and move it away then it will do this see what I mean it's still attached but it's not looking directly at the car it will only do that again when you change at car. And then we cannot, no matter what, we cannot make it go and look away elsewhere. You can still spin around, but you can't change where it's looking. It's similar with at group, but what at group does is it compensates for other cars in the shot. So when there are more cars, it will move away from the car in focus here in the middle of the screen. And look at other things. But look, you can see I'm doing it here on my left hand. I am not repeat not, I'm just checking that it's still recording on the phone, <laughs> not able to look away elsewhere. Now that's an important thing to remember as well if you're doing screenshots, for example. So what I wanted to do for you here as a little bonus in this video is show you exactly how I line up a screenshot. So I know that the sun on the car, you can see where the shadow is, the sun is going to be roughly on the left-hand side of this car now, so this side's going to be in the shade. There's a nice little wall here that someone could potentially stand behind, although to be fair, yeah, you would stand there if you're a lunatic, I suppose. I always use scenic cams just because they are fixed and they are free to do whatever you want with. These are the ones we had before. So using just the keybinds and this menu on the right here with my mouse, this is how quickly I line up screenshots. I'm gonna go into silent concentration mode, despite the fact that I'm talking. So I know roughly where the cars are on track. There's Lee's car there. And when you get near, you're gonna just put it on at car. So we're looking at his car. Take it off this times 10 thing down here. And make sure the car's behind the barrier compared to where the camera is. You know, you want the camera in a realistic place. But all this is just WASD, just positioning the camera. You can change this value to make things slower as well. Now, manual focus can be good fun to play with, but what I always do is have it on autofocus so it looks at the car focuses on the car like that you get a lovely bit of blur here on the barrier now people would have a lower aperture but as we know with iRacing you get this little halo effect around cars if the background is really far away from them what we've got then is this option dampen camera now when you skip a frame to get the motion blur on sometimes the car like that there will blur as well you want to have that off so it's fixed right in the middle of the shot and the car stays sharp get it into a place where you like it like that and then I change that back to static, just to give it maybe a bit more of a tilt, a bit more of an angle like that, for example, and then boom, there's your screenshot. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this. Um, having
play and all the op other options, you know, fast forward, rewind, previous incident, last lap, so on. Uh, there was another one I forgot to mention as well. Um, if you were in a full replay, which we're not here, I would show you better. Control and 4 and 6, rather than shift and 4 and 6, actually takes you between sessions. So if you have practice, qualifying and a race, you could start in practice in your replay where it starts at the very beginning. If you wanted to go to the start of qualifying, you'd do control and 6. It'd take a minute to get there, but it would get you to qualifying, control and 6 again, and the race, and obviously vice versa with control and 4. But they are the key binds, they are easy to learn. When you get used to them, you don't have to sit here going like this and then going, right, let's go to TV1, let's look at this guy. You know, you can just go bang and then flick through all the cars. Simple as that. Control F12 as well, don't forget, means that it will not change if it's on something like a TV camera or a camera set of multiple groups in. I know I've gone a very strangled way about this, but it's one of those things again where you get into it and then you suddenly remember, oh, I've got to tell them about this. So. Hopefully I've at least cleared some things up for you, if not made it more complicated, but thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you again very soon.